Welcome to Chem 309 Intro Part 2. In this video, um, we're going to look at some of the underlying basic knowledge concepts that are going to be very important throughout the entire course. And remembering from our previous video, really internalizing um, that basic knowledge is really going to create the foundation for really good grade, great grades, A's and B's. All right, so let's get started. I love this definition of chemistry. It's the study of the universe and the changes it undergoes. And um, so ultimately, if we look at the universe, we divide it into matter and energy. Of course, there's the whole antimatter conversation, but we'll, we'll, we'll focus on what's at hand here. All right, so matter is anything with mass and volume. All right, so units are gonna be a big deal in this class because we're gonna wanna think about what are the units describing, right? So mass units, grams, pounds, ounces, volume, milliliters, fluid ounces, right? Um, volume, if you're wondering, right, it's the three-dimensional shape, right? How much space does it take? How much does it weigh? And how much space does it take? That's matter. Matter, we can weigh it, and it has a size. Now, the other thing is energy. Now, the definition of energy is the capacity to do work. And Chem 309 will require a lot of energy because there's a lot of work. Because we're going to be covering two and a half years of college chemistry, surveying it in 16 weeks. Now, energetically in the chemistry world, it really comes down to electrostatics. That is a very um, primary driving force of the energy. And so what do I mean by electrostatics? Charge. All right, so it's a fancy way to say charge. So when we look at things chemically, some things will be neutral, but more interesting, we can have things with both positive, some things will have positive charge, some things will have negative charge, and these things will be attracted to each other, electrostatic attraction. And then, of course, so if opposites attract, like charges will repel. So everything in this class is going to be about maximizing attraction and minimizing repulsion. And then I just put the definition of work here in case you're um, wondering what that is. So that's about all we're really going to talk about energy-wise. Um, you want to start memorizing your ions because we can see that whether it's a, a positive ion or a negative ion, that's going to determine whether things are attracted or repelled. So get started on those ions. But for right now, we're going to focus on matter. And basically, all of the matter on this planet is made from the elements on the periodic table. And atoms in their pure form are neutral. They have no charge. Okay, and if we look at the periodic table, there's a couple things we can notice, right? So many of the elements only have a single um, letter, and notice it's always uppercase. And if there's two symbols, the second letter is lowercase, right? So upper, uppercase, and lowercase. Now chemistry is full of symbols, and so it might feel a little strange. Is she really wasting my time talking to me about the case of letters? Yes, because it's important, and let me show you why. Right? If we have an uppercase C and a uppercase O, many of you probably know what that is, right? That's carbon monoxide. And what do you guys know about carbon monoxide? Right? It's a poisonous gas, right? People kill themselves with it. The interesting thing about um, carbon monoxide is when people die from it, they look amazing. They look like they just went to the beach. Um, by blocking the oxygen metabolism in our body, it turns um, our skin kind of a light red. Looks like we have a little bit of a sunburn from the beach. All right? Now, let's look at uppercase C, lowercase o, right? What is this? Many of you probably know. This is cobalt. It's a mineral. And if you like, like flowers, right? Be beautiful vases. So this is some um, silica oxide. 
that's been doped with cobalt. It makes this beautiful glass, right? So two uppercase letters, poison. Uppercase, lowercase, pretty glass, right? Why we care. Okay, a couple more examples to convince you. Here we go, uppercase C, lowercase a. Most people, right, you guys know that one? Calcium, right? Calcium, it's an important nutrient. It's a mineral, right? I think we all know about teeth and bones. Um, calcium ions. When we move our muscles, right? Moving our muscles, there's a release of calcium ions to trigger that muscle movement. And the latest research shows um, neurotransmitters, right? The communication within our body also needs calcium, right? So this is an important nutrient. Uppercase C, uppercase A, what's that? That's where we live, California, right? So um, it's very important that we pay attention to um, the symbols of the elements. All right, now we can go to the next page. So we'll slide this back down. Alrighty, okay. Now, when we look at the periodic table here, the atoms are arranged according to their outermost electrons. So basic knowledge, outermost electrons, those are called valence electrons, right? So valence electrons, it's important to learn this term, right? And so we remember from the previous page that atoms are neutral, right? But we talked about energetically electrostatics, okay? So where does this charge come from? Well, some elements can lose electrons, right? Now, the symbol for an electron, it's right here, right? So it's an E with a minus, right? So whenever we have charge, we put it in that top right corner. And so we see that an electron has a minus one charge. So when you were in math class and you were wondering why you had to learn negative numbers, it was for chemistry, right? Because elements gain and lose electrons and they have negative charge. So if an element lo can lose electrons, what happens to the overall charge, right? It started neutral and we lost those negative electrons, so then those elements become positive ions. And so the term that we use for positive ions is cations. So some more vocabulary. When I was learning this, to me the T looked like a plus sign, so that helped me remember that cations are positive ions. Now, other um, elements, they will um, gain electrons, right? So if we start, right, the elements were neutral, but if they gain negative charge, of course, they're going to become negative ions. And so those are called anions. And so the T was for the plus, for positive ions, and then the anions, that negative, N is negative for the anions, right? Okay, so if we look, Right, for example, right, so calcium is an element and it can become calcium two plus, right? It lost two electrons. And a chlorine atom, it can become chloride, right? It gained one electron, all right? And remember that we'll always put the charge in that top right corner. So to distinguish between an atom and an ion. Okay, so before the periodic table was even arranged like this, the chemists from days gone by, they were grouping the elements because they had similar chemistry. So these repeating patterns of reactivity created group names. And these group names do show up on um, standardized tests for people going into allied health careers, so it's important that we memorize them. So um, I want, so it's important to memorize the following group names. This first column with lithium, sodium, potassium, these are called the alkali metals. And these metals are all grouped together because they love to be plus one. And, that, and they're fixed, they're only plus one. The second column, notice the pattern. These elements want to be plus two. They're called alkaline 
earth metals. And so one trick that helped me when I was learning these names is write alkali, right? Only one word plus one. Alkaline earth, two words plus two. Now in the middle here, these 10 columns are called the transition metals. And the transition metals, they're tricky because they can have variable positive charge. So, um, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a minute, okay? But they're, and so they're not, so these alkali and alkaline earth, they're fixed. Always plus one, always plus two. But the transition metals can have variable charges. Now when we get over here, right, here's aluminum. So aluminum is special and that's plus three. And we'll talk a little bit more about why aluminum is special. It's a metal as the course continues. Now we reach a divide, right? So these, you see this stair step line here? These are the metals on the left and the non-metals to the right. We'll have that again in the future. Don't worry if you missed it, right? Right here in the center, here is carbon. Carbon doesn't want to be an ion. Carbon, right, with the C, right? It wants to share electrons. Okay, so we will come back to that. Um, and then over here, this last column, let's look at that one as well. This column doesn't want to react either. Well, this carbon will want to react, but this group here, these are the noble gases. And we won't be studying them very much because they don't do much, right? They are inert. And inert means that they don't want to react. Unless we torture them in a um, particle beam or something, right? But in normal, normal environment, they don't react. Now, Let's check our pattern here. This column right here is going to be minus one. All of the elements in this column want to be minus one, and they're all called halogens. So we want to make sure that we know this column are the halogens. Now, the remaining two columns, here we have oxygen. It doesn't have a special name. The important thing to know is like oxygen and sulfur, they like to be minus two. And last but not least, here's the nitrogen. Nitrogen and phosphorus, when they're by themselves, they want to be minus three. So we can see a pattern there. So let's um, put this all together to help you get started memorizing ions, right? So if we look, for example, here's sodium. So if we see sodium by itself, that's an atom. If we see sodium with the plus at the top, this is a sodium ion. And because this first column is always plus one, we know if it's a sodium ion, it has to be plus one. Let's compare that with a transition metal, like iron, right? So when iron's just like this by itself, we know it's neutral, it's an atom. But what can happen, right, is iron can be plus two, or iron can be plus three. So we have to be able to distinguish. So when we name this ion, it's iron with a Roman numeral two. That's an iron two ion. And then of course this would be an iron three ion. So when we're memorizing our, um, our transition metals, and let's see, and tin and lead. Remember that it's essential that we have that Roman numeral. It's part of the ion name because these elements have variable charge. Okay, now let's look at our last page. So in this class, right, the, the, the class is gonna start with inorganic chemistry. And remember I told you we'd get to that stair step, right? So. Whether the periodic table ha draws in the stair step or not, we want to see it. And everything to the left of the stair step is a metal. And metals like to form cations. All right? 
And then everything to the right of the stair step is a nonmetal. Now, nonmetals can do two things. They can form anions or they can share electrons. All right, so we're going to start the course really focusing on the ions, and that's going to be more what we would call inorganic chemistry. We're going to look at things with like ionic compounds. Now, we will see carbon, but when we see carbon here, there will be no carbon to hydrogen bonds, right? It's more about, for example, like carbonate, right? So we have carbon present, okay? Or even if we have bicarbonate, okay? This hydrogen is not bonded to carbon, it's bonded to oxygen. So these are some important ions for us to learn. Carbonate and bicarbonate. Okay, so going back to our early ex earlier example, when we looked at right, like calcium, right? Calcium is an alkaline earth, so we know it likes to be plus two. And chlorine is a halogen, so it becomes chloride. All right, so um, it's important for us to learn our ion charges because when these ions come together, they're going to want to make neutral compounds, right? Form neutral compounds. So that means that the total positive charge is going to have to equal the total negative charge. So we're already bringing together our matter and energy, right? Because we talked about energetically, these are going to be attracted to each other, but we have to have the charges balance. So if we look here, each calcium is going to be plus two, right? But for chloride, we, we're going to need two of them. Right, so we have a plus two and a minus two. So when we bring these together, we are going to have the calcium, and then we're going to need two chlorides. So notice when we write the chemical formula, we don't show the charges, that's why we're memorizing them, and notice that the bottom right corner is where we show the ratio. So compounds always have a fixed ratio. So we've learned about the top right corner and the bottom left corner. So that's where we're going to be emphasizing um, be early in the course. But to get to biochemistry, we're going to have to learn organic chemistry. And that's about molecules. Molecules are different from ions. And here we're going to have a carbon backbone. So here we will have carbon molecules carbon atoms bonded to each other, and typically there will be at least some of the carbon atoms will be bonded to hydrogen. All right, and so this is when we're going to learn our organic functional groups. So at the beginning for exam one, ions are the path to success. For exam two, we need to learn our organic functional groups because that's how, we learn, that's how we're going to learn biochemistry. So to wrap up, I just wanted to show you a molecule, an organic molecule. So here's that carbon backbone. These, the black balls all represent carbon, and this is a very simple fatty acid. And this is our future, and we're going to build up to this systematically and logically. So don't worry, we'll get there. But um, I just wanted to give you a sense of this whole idea of the carbon backbone. And so these are some very essential um, basic knowledge concepts that we're going to build and will carry through the entire course. So the sooner you get them memorized, the better off you're going to be.